Hello everyone, it's guest designer Mark here and today I thought I'd share with you how we make and construct this beautiful carrier bead bracelet. So what is a carrier bead? Well a carrier bead is a double drilled, as you can see we've got two holes, it's an oval, it's got two flat sides and predominantly these are made for incorporating POT seed bead bands. Now there are two types of carrier bead. There's the check glass, which we use here at Jewelry Maker, and you can also buy them in acrylic as well. So if you want to just use them as a bead without covering them, you can do that. But as I said, the carrier bead is purely invented to make little POT bands, which we then place over the beads. So I thought I'd do it in a bit of a reverse for this demonstration. So what I've got in front of me are the components that you're going to need. So I've, co I've chosen two colours of 11O Delica. I've gone for this pure white and a magenta pink. Then I've gone for some 4mm black Swarovski bicones. Then you're also going to need a toggle clasp or a clasp of your choice, some crimp beads, some crimp bead covers, and I'm going to be using beading thread, tiger tail, to construct the bracelet. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you how we attach the bands to the carriers. Then I'm going to show you how we make a band, and then I'm going to show you how we construct the whole bracelet. So the extra large carrier beads, we'll talk about this more in detail when we come to actually producing the bands. You can actually place the bands on in two specific ways. You can space them on horizontally. As you can see, they just slip on beautifully. So you can put them on horizontally or vertically. So you place that over the top. Now for the vertical bands, as I said we'll talk about this in more detail in a second, you need 40 rows of your POT. This is the extra large carrier bead. If you have the ordinary size carrier bead it'll be less rows. And for the horizontal band you'll need 60 rows. So that's 60 for the horizontal and 40 for the vertical. Now the vertical band is what we're going to be using on this demonstration. Because we're actually going to be threading either side of the band, holding it into position, we won't need to adhere the band to the carrier bead. If we're going to be doing it horizontally, we will, because as you can see, it slips and it moves. Okay, so there are two ways of doing this. You can either glue it onto your, onto your carrier bead, or what I like, and this is my preferred way of doing it. If I use the black one it'll show up a bit better. So this is for the horizontal band. I use this. Now this is five millimeter gauge double-sided sticky tape. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little section off of the roll. You only probably want a couple of inches. So I'm going to take a piece off. Put that to one side. And all we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of tape and we're going to centralise it on our carrier bead, as central as we can. And then we're just going to take that all the way around to the back. Now it doesn't have to meet on the other side, as long as you have some adherment. And we're just going to peel off the backing paper, which sometimes is easier said than done. There we go. Just going to take off the backing paper. Now I prefer this method because it is a, it is a quick fix. So you can see the sticky tape on the back of the carrier bead there. And all we're going to do is we're going to place the band over the carrier bead and then we're going to place it nice and central and then you can go in and you can give it a squidge. Now as you can see, I'm, I have, on this particular carrier bead I'm using four rows. So we've got 60 rows and four beads deep. But as you can see there's quite a bit of excess carrier bead top and bottom. So you can either do six rows, or if you want to do odd count, you can do seven rows. But for this bracelet, I wanted to show you how to do a four because it's a, it's a quick fix. And also, if you're new to carrier beading, it is quite time consuming, carrier bead banding. So we thought if we did a vertical strip, it's quicker. And because we're only doing four rows, it'll be really quick make. So that's using the double sided sticky tape method. But as I said, you can use glue as well. But if you are using glue, you might need to keep that overnight just to set. Okay, so I'll put this to one side. So as we mentioned earlier, it's all about peyote. 
So what I've got here is I've got a piece of thread, probably about 60 centimeters long. I've got a size 12 needle, and then I've just popped on a stopper bead. Um, I'm actually going to show you this. This is my stopper bead bowl, and these are all the remnants of tubes that I've used. And uh, I tend to go for a stopper bead that's a completely different color to the product I'm using, so there's no confusion. So that's my little seed bead stopper bead pot. So on our needle, we're going to um, decide on our pattern. And as you can see, I've gone for a band of magenta down the center with a smaller band of white down each side. So I'm going to pick up a white, two magenta, and a white. And I'm going to slide those beads down. Now this is even count peyote. I recently did a video for odd count. If you want to look back at my Facebook page, you'll be able to find that. But this is even count. So as you can see, we've got a white, two magenta and a white. So I'm going to go back away from me now. So I'm going to pick up a white. I'm going to skip over the white and sew into the magenta. And these two white beads will sit nice and neatly next to each other, like so. So we've got two little beads sat next to each other. Then we're going to pick up a magenta and we're just going to move that tail out of the way. And we're going to skip the first magenta and sew into the next white. I'm just going to pull that nice and tight. So now we have that little shape there. So we've got two whites, one white, and then the two magenta and the one magenta in the center. And we're just going, we're going, to, we're going to flip it over. Now you can flip it over and do the same direction every time, as I've mentioned in the odd count POT, or you can just go up and down, up and down. Now, because we're only using two colors and we're only doing four rows, there's a quick combination to follow. So every move, you're going to pick up one white, skip the white, pick up a magenta, skip the magenta. So it couldn't be simpler. As I said, because it's, it's only four rows, you could probably make one of these in 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to come back on myself now. So I'm going to pick up a white, skip the white, pick up a magenta, skip the magenta. Okay, you can already see it's starting to build up quite quickly. So I'm just going to place that down to one side. And I've got a piece here that I've made. And this is 40 rows. So as you can see, it builds up quite quickly. Now the way to determine how many rows you counted, because every time we go up, that's a row. Every time we come down, that's a row. Up one, down one. The way I counted to find out if I've got enough rows, if I just show you, is you need one side of your band. On the bottom row, you need a sticky inny, I'll call it. So that's inverted. When you get to the other end, you have a sticky outy. Now this is called zipping up, which again, we've done on a previous demonstration. So all I need to do is make sure now that I've got 40 rows. So the way to do it is I start on the bottom row and I count in twos because we know that up and down is two rows. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. So we know we've got the exact amount of number beads needed to zip up our little band. So all we're going to do is we're going to pick up our band. We're going to fold it over in half. And this is where we zip up. So I'm coming out of the left hand white. I'm going to go across to the right hand white. And then I'm going to go across to the left magenta. I'm going to go across to the right magenta. And then I'm going to go across left to the left white. So all I've done is I've done a zigzag formation, picking up the beads on the opposite rows. So then I'm going to pull nice and tight and give it a bit of a squidge. I'm going to slide off the stopper bead. And all I'm going to do is tie a single knot which will secure the band nice and tightly. And then I'm going to tie a double knot. So one and two. Okay, again, nice and tight. And then what I'm going to do with the needle that I've still got attached to my thread, I'm going to get away from the knot. And all I'm going to do is sew, get that nice and tight. So I'm exiting through this little bead here. I'm going to simply Sew down the next bead and 
and so up the next. So all I'm doing is purely getting away from the knot. So up and then down. So once I've done a couple of, of beads, I will then go in and safely cut off my threads. Okay, and then you have your POT vertical band. So next what we're going to do, because we know we're not have it attaching any tape because we're doing it vertically, what we're going to do is going to take our, our bead, I'm going to go for the white one, and we're just going to place that over the top of our band. And you can see we've got the two holes either side. We're going to be threading up so there's nowhere for it to go so we know we don't need to, to, to glue it. So if I show you the bracelet that I'm making currently. So this is the bracelet. So what I've done to start, I've used beading thread as I mentioned in the introduction and this is the tiger tail that you get in your threading packs. So I've taken a piece of thread about three foot long, it's a bit over excessive but I like to have more than enough. I've taken the thread, I've folded it in half and I've placed a crimp bead. With that crimp bead I've then placed the first half of my toggle clasp I've sewn back through the crimp and I've crimped the crimp bead nice and tight. I'll do this when we get to the other end just so you can see. And then just to make it nice and neat, I've popped a little crimp cover on the end. And then I started constructing my bracelet. So first of all, I've taken both of the threads through one of the magenta 11 O's. And as you can see, I've come up with a combination of beads in between my carriers. Now I've alternated the carrier bead color between white and black. So I've popped on this little combination before the bead. So we've got white, magenta, Swarovski, magenta, white on both of our threads. Then I've popped on one of my carrier beads. So I've started with white. And then all I've done is in between, I've made the same little combinations of the seed beads and Swarovski. So just keep an eye on as you're threading and consider the length of your bracelet. So I'm going to slide that down. So you can see we're, we're alternating now. So I finished here with some beads. So that's now ready for my last carrier bead, which we've just produced. So I'm going to pop one thread on one side of the carrier, one thread on the other side, pull that through. And as you can see, there's nowhere for that, that carrier bead band to go. It's locked into position. So then we're going to finish off this end. So we know we're going to follow that combination in the middle there. So we're going to pick up a white, a magenta, a Swarovski, a magenta and a white. Slide those down. And then we're going to do exactly the same with our second thread. So a white, a magenta, a Swarovski, a magenta, and a white, slide that down. And then just to, to, um, to bring those two together, I'm going to take both of the threads and I'm going to pop both of them through one of the magenta 11 delicas and slide that down. So now you can see it brings it nice and neatly together in a nice pointed V. So we end with a V at the end and we began with a V at the front of the bracelet. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to cut these threads a bit shorter and I'm going to use my flush cutter pliers just to cut the threads a bit shorter. And I'm going to pop on the second half of my clasp. So I'm going to take both of my threads through my crimp bead. Then I'm going to take the second part of my clasp and I'm going to thread that on through the two threads. And I'm going to take the two threads back down through the crimp bead and I can use the, the toggle now as a, as a helping hand to pull and secure nice and tight. Okay, make sure that they're all sitting how we want them, which is perfect. Now I don't like to make, when I'm, I'm closing up my crimp bead, I don't like to force it up against the clasp. I like to, to have a little bit of a space and a little bit of wiggle room. And that's plenty. It's probably about five millimeters there. And then using our flat nose pliers, just, just to go in and give it a nice little squidge. I tend to flip it over and squidge from the other side. 
and I'm going to go in again with my flush cutter pliers and I'm going to cut the two threads off nice and neatly and then we're going to pop on our crimp cover just to give it a nice finish. So I'm going to take one of the crimp covers and I've gone for a, a rose gold colour, place it in my flat nose pliers and then holding at a nice angle so you can see I can go straight in, I can cover the crimp give it a squidge and then what I like to do is I like to go around all four points of the compass so turning your piece of work all the way around and then you're left with a nice neat crimp cover which is nicely nicely finished as you can see there and then we just make sure that it closes nicely pop that through perfect so as you can see we've got an alternating carrier bead vertical banded bracelet using Swarovski elements and delicacy beads. So I hope you enjoyed the, the demo and I look forward to seeing your makes very soon. Have a good day. Bye bye.